Oh, uh, Robert here, fact-checking stories that scare you. And this is for people who are scared that there's going to be a nuclear war in 2020 because of an alleged uh, prediction by Jean Dixon. And she, she did indeed say that there would be a nuclear war in 2020, but look at the other things she said would happen. First of all, she is most famous for uh, predicting, allegedly for predicting Kennedy's assassination. We will see that she didn't really predict it. And then she also, but look at the other things she predicted. She predicted World War Three in 1958, Russia to beat America to the moon, cure for cancer in 1967, Holocaust in the 1980s, which then she said, I haven't put that in that uh, image, but she then said that that would lead to Rome becoming the centre of the world for uh, learning and, and uh, research and everything. And then the, the United States is no longer a big power and we are all under United Rome. And then she says, well, that's a Middle East leader, unites the world in one religion in 1999, and there's world peace in the year 2000. And then the things fall apart, and China takes over most of Asia, and then the armies of United Rome in 2020 are, are the nuclear war that she's predicting is this big uh, nuclear war between the armies of United Rome and China. So, uh, since we don't have armies of United Rome, then there's no risk of this nuclear war. You know, she's clear she couldn't see the future in 2020. We're just not in anything like that scenario. So, hopefully that's enough so you'll stop worrying about this nuclear war between the armies of the United States. They say, they say that she predicted a nuclear war. The people who try and make you scared don't tell you the extra detail that this is a nuclear war between the armies of United Rome and China. And if they did, then you'd immediately see through it. And um, so that, that's about all you need to do about being scared of this nuclear war. And then also talk about she didn't really predict Kennedy's assassination. There's something called the Gene Dixon effect. If you have someone does thousands of predictions, and we often get that with earthquake predictors, you get people say, it's going to be an earthquake tomorrow, it's going to be an earthquake next week, it's going to be an earthquake tomorrow, and they keep on saying that every most days of the year, and from time to time they're going to be right, because there are earthquakes, and quite a lot of earthquakes, just randomly by chance. And then they say, ah, oh, I predicted that earthquake, and they don't tell you all the other times they didn't predict an earthquake. And all the, t all the times they predict a big one, there's just a little tremor that happens all the time. So the Gene Dixon effect is, 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 is uh, that's basically another example of the Gene Dixon effect, that you just make thousands of predictions. And actually, she had a pretty poor record. The, do you would expect, if it was just uh, random, that at least some of those predictions would happen every year, that she'd be predicting something or other that would happen. And if you look at this prediction of the Kennedy's assassination, she didn't really predict it. First of all, she didn't think that Kennedy was going to win. She didn't think that, sorry, she didn't think that Kennedy was going to become president. And then um, she, her prediction was that an unnamed president would be assassinated or die in office. And since so she didn't say which term, that's uh, three presidents out of ten. So there's a 30% chance of it being a success as a prediction. So that's not very impressive. And then even more, though, she predicted, she actually said that he would not be elected and she predicted the actual president would have thick brown hair and blue eyes and Kennedy had grey-green eyes and reddish hair. And it's a bit clearer in this image that his hair is quite reddish. This is from a video. I've got a clip to the video as well. So blue-eyed with a shock of thick brown hair, he has grey-green eyes and reddish hair, clearly reddish. So uh, this just doesn't mean anything. Anyone who makes so many attempts at prediction likely has a few ones that are correct or correct if you squint at them, as it were. And this is it. And this is the... I, I don't actually have a book, but I did it using the snippet view and, and this little snippet part of it. And I, I, I found some bits of it here and some bits of it there and some of it in Google Snippets. And I kind of united it all together to give this proper quote. And 
you know, that this is about the Chinese armies will take all of Asia quickly, then gathering their hordes, then bringing hundreds of thousands, they will move like locusts over land towards the Allied armies in the Middle East, and those are the armies of, of the Allied Rome. Um, uh, and firestorms, they surmise enough of their armies will survive the blast of Asia and firestorms, defeat the armies of Allied Rome. And so, I mean, it's nothing at all to do. It's also rather uh, racist about Chinese as well. And, uh, yes. So, the, uh, and then, and then she talks that's, that then the second, true second coming of Christ, she says, is between 2020 and 2037, after this great nuclear war between the Allied armies of Armies, armies, armies of Allied Rome and the great armies of China and uh, taking over most of Asia. So it, it's something you could see in uh, someone writing a Christian apocalyptic, apocalyptic fictional move, uh, story to entertain Christian readers and it's, it's, there's no truth in this at all. Not, not, I, I'd like to just say, by the way, that this whole idea of Jesus returning quickly is not a widespread Christian belief at all. This is a belief of a minority that is, uh, that is a majority in Bible Belt United States. I'm not, I'm not sure if even it, it being like this is really a majority, but it's quite common there. But in the rest of the world, 95% of the world doesn't have this idea at all. And uh, so, some Christian theologians think it all happened way back in the first century, everything in the book of Revelations. And even Jesus' second coming, according to some people. And then if you look at the Catholic Church, then the Catholic Church think that uh, Jesus is going to return when the work of the Church is done, which uh, is clearly not like not any time soon. So they have this idea of perpetually being ready for Jesus to return. But then if you look at the timeline, then it can't be for a long, long time into the future. In, in particular, the Catholics predict that, uh, not through them converting them, but just through a natural course of events, that the Jews in Israel will decide that they're all going to become Christian first. That's hardly likely to come happen any time soon. So I think you can be pretty sure that the Catholic Second Coming is not going to come, happen any time soon. And um, others just don't don't think like that at all. The, I, I was a Quaker when I was Christian, and Quakers think in terms of the Book of Revelation. I didn't know that at the time, but I found out since then. But certainly we didn't have the idea of the Second Coming in this sense. But I, I wasn't actually a Quaker, I was an attender. I was someone who attended because I was interested, and uh, but they had the belief that George Fox had had the idea that the Book of Revelation was about the present and always about the present, and always about Jesus always being here. And so the Second Coming is not some distant future event; it's something here and now. And this and the Book of Revelation is all the Book of Revelation is actually uh, written in the past tense, if you read it. And so, as a revelation of something that has already happened. So, that's why there's so many different ways of interpreting it. And so, some people interpret it as actually having happened in the past, some say it's a vision of a future event, and some say that it's, as the Quakers do, that it's uh, about the present, and it's always about the present. So, then, and that's much easier to fit with science, because you don't need then need to think about, you know, how could this? It, 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 can't, it can't happen scientifically. It has to be some big miracle. But if you if you think of it as always in the present, then you don't need to have this issue of trying to explain what kind of future you know, trying to think of it as being a huge miraculous thing that happens in the past, or trying to fit it in with ideas of history which just don't work. Or um, you know, the, if you look at the, trying to imagine Revelation, try to make it into a historical narrative, it's very hard to make any sense of that in our times. And and so so many Christians think like that as well. So just, just a heads up on that. And uh, if, that you, you that you don't have to feel that as a Christian you have to believe these sorts of stories. 
anyway so I'll end this now and upload it and hopefully I'll help some of you and do do uh, it's our Facebook group Doomsday Debunked help scared people uh, Doomsday Debunked I know it's uh, yes it's called I can't forget the phrase it's called Robert Walk to fact check and science blogger now I used to call it Doomsday Debunked but that seemed to be a better better uh, name for it and so that's what you're watching just now do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this and uh, do join the group if you're scared or if you want to help as a fact checker or help the scared people in, in whatever way and our channel our Facebook group is Aut Autism Friend Friendly and Bipolar Friendly so don't worry if you communicate in ways that often cause you problems in online communities because we are understanding that some people have these means of communication and they don't see the same social cues as others and we are very accommodating and our rules are very clearly defined rules to, to make it very easy for autistic people to engage and know exactly what is and is not um, uh, permitted in the group in a very clearly defined way, not requiring social nuances to understand. <laughs>